Hi, Adia. Hi, Hannah. Hi, I'm Hannah Polanski, and we have with us today Adrian Jamaharia. And we're here to talk about a paper that we published recently about the relationship between longevity and viruses. The question we are trying to answer is, is there a relationship? Are people infected with a virus in a problem in regard to their longevity? Meaning, do they die earlier? I think uh, that's an interesting question that a lot of people would like to have the answers to. So, shall we start? Yes. Okay. Uh, as I said, it's a question about the relationship between viruses and between longevity. And the relationship, of course, centers on specific viruses, viruses that a lot of people are infected with, such as CMV, a very common virus, the full name is cytomegalovirus. Another virus is EBV, again, full name, Epstein-Barr virus, and a few others. And what we try to actually uh, answer is, if somebody is infected with this virus, not just infected, infected in a latent phase, meaning the virus is not actually manufacturing symptoms. Somebody feels completely healthy. Is it possible to be completely healthy, completely of course, uh, with quotation marks, uh, and still something in the background is going on that this person is suffering from without knowing? And the result is shorter longevity. So let's start. Go ahead. Okay, so our DNA is divided into chromosomes, and at the ends of these chromosomes are protected by stretches of DNA called telomeres. Think of telomeres as the plastic tips at the ends of shoelaces. Without these plastic tips, the shoelaces will just unravel. So every time our cell divides, the telomere gets shorter. Now, when the telomere gets too short, the cell stops dividing or it just dies. Um, now, there have been studies that showing that um, some people that have aging diseases, such as heart disease, diabetes, and rheumatoid arthritis, they have shorter telomeres. But this is just half the story. Um, there's a study that showed that people who suffer from heart disease and are also infected by the cytomegalovirus, or CMV, have the shortest telomeres. Now, remember we said before that people who suffer from diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis, they have shorter telomeres? Well, they also have a virus in their body. So, um, this is a mystery. Do viruses shorten telomeres? And if they do, how? The answer is, in one word, microcompetition. One word, I need to explain. It's not very complicated, but it will take me a few minutes, so bear with me. What is microcompetition? First of all, let's start with DNA. You see, this is a model of DNA, lots of colors, beautiful molecule, really exciting. When it was uh, described for the first time, the structure was described for the first time, it was described by two scientists, uh, Watson and Crick in, in the 50s, and they received the Nobel Prize for the description. It was such an exciting discovery. Everybody in biology was really at awe, awe with, with, with uh, this discovery. So, what is the structure of DNA and why is this structure so important? Well, first of all, it's a double helix, as you can see, lots of colors, lots of shapes. Uh, the other thing is that every piece of DNA is called a gene. And a gene is like an assembly line, an assembly line of proteins. It's a very complicated process, I won't go too deep into it, but let me just uh, stay with this uh, analogy. So, it's an assembly line of proteins. And like every assembly line, there are two sections. There's the conveyor, where the actual pieces of the protein is being assembled. And then there is a switchboard. Why do you need a switchboard? Because you need to control the production of proteins. You need to control more, you control less, you produce fast, meaning a really uh, high quantity of these proteins. So you slow down. So you need a switchboard. And like every switchboard, you have buttons, buttons to press. If you press a certain button, the assembly line starts to work and you see proteins. You press another button, the assembly line stops and the proteins are not being produced. Now, for illustration purposes, I attached a magnet. This magnet illustrates one of these buttons. So let's call this button an end box. It's a very important button, so it has a name. An end box. Now, a button is not enough. You need a finger. <laughs> a finger to actually press the button. If you won't have the finger, the button won't be pressed. The process will stop. To illustrate a finger, I took this stone with, of course, a magnet attached to it. And this finger, once it's bound to, attached to the button, 
the assembly line starts to work and what you see at the end of the process as I said are proteins. To illustrate that I brought in this mushroom, reverse mushroom. This illustrates a protein. Here's one protein being manufactured, there's another one and so on and so forth, a third, a fourth, a fifth, as many as the cell needs to function in a healthy way. Okay, so that's the first half of the story called microcompetition. Now the second half of the story, I promised something about viruses. So here we have a virus. This is DNA of a virus. Of course it looks the same because the DNA of a virus and the DNA of a cell is the same DNA, the same structure, the same everything. Two surprises. Number one, also has buttons. Why? Because it's an assembly line. You see this button? It's not surprising it looks exactly the same as this button because they do have the same button. Both of them have N boxes identical buttons. The other surprise is that a, viral, a virus is not manufacturing its own fingers in professional terms, trans transcription factors. So in order to produce its own proteins it has to get these transcription factors or these fingers from somewhere. Where from? From the cell. Remember it was bound here. The moment the virus enters the cell and actually enters the nucleus it's stealing away or taking away these fingers from the gene, the cellular gene. But here's the drama. Drum rolls. Drama. Here's the drama. And what is the drama? The moment these fingers are being stolen from the gene, the human gene, the human gene doesn't have these fingers anymore, the human gene stops. It does not manufacture its own protein. You see these two proteins? Now they are gone. Instead what you see, of course, are the proteins now being manufactured and shining by the virus. But if there are no proteins in this part, no proteins manufactured by the human gene, no proteins, the cell suffers, agonizing, sad, not healthy anymore. The cell is sick, maybe even dying, maybe even doing other things that it's not supposed to do. Who's responsible for that? Who's the bad guy in this story? The virus. The one that stole the fingers from the human gene. Okay? I call this process microcompetition. And it's written in my book if you're interested in reading more about it. And, go ahead. Now, one of the genes that's required to keep the telomeres at its proper length is called the TERF2 gene. Now, as it turns out, the TERF2 gene requires the finger that is stolen by the viral DNA in order to produce its protein. So, no finger, no TERF2 protein. No TERF2 protein shorter telomeres. It's that remarkable. Think about it. This explains why people that are infected with certain latent viruses age faster. So guys, that's it. That's the heart of the paper. We explain the relationship between viruses and between longevity. Why when somebody is infected with a latent virus, a virus that, that does not produce any symptoms, a, a virus where you feel healthy, wonderful, amazing, but you're not. The virus is doing something. It's working there in the darkness, lurking, taking away these transcription factors, stealing the fingers, producing its own proteins on a small scale. So you don't really have, you don't really feel that they're actually producing anything, but they do. The problem is the cell, the gene in the cell, the genes in the cells are suffering because they are not getting their own fingers and as a result not producing the necessary proteins to actually function at a normal healthy level. So that's our paper. We published it in Open Medicine, which is a journal you, everybody can read. It's free of charge. Just put our names, Polanski and Javaharian, and you find a paper, you can read it. It's technical, of course. It's written for scientists. That's why we filmed this video, so everybody can understand uh, our ideas. And if you're interested in communicating with us, send us an email. We'll be very happy to respond to any email that we are getting. And the last comment, of course, is about subscribing. We have a channel, the one you're watching now. So please subscribe. This is how we communicate with each other. We believe that science should be explained to the general public. Everybody should have access to the ideas that scientists share with each other. So we'll continue filming these uh, uh, videos and the benefit of the public and in our benefit. We're having fun doing it. We hope that you're having fun watching it. Thank you. Have a great day. Apollo 13, logging off. <laughs> <laughs> Just wasted the whole thing. <laughs> now you'll cut it there. <laughs> no, I can't.